Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna go over some of the best double strategies that you're gonna be able to utilize in your games to beat the Blueberry Academy when the Indigo Disc DLC part two drops for Scarlet and Violet later this year. So with the Indigo Disc coming very soon to Scarlet and Violet, we recently had a bunch of content creators have the opportunity to have hands-on experience with playing this brand new DLC. One of the big information points that came out from these preview articles was the fact that the Blueberry Academy trainers will be focusing on doubles battles rather than singles battles, which leads us all into today's video, which is going to be here to help you with some double strategies for you to implement in your own games to make beating these trainers and these strategies a lot easier. Now in Joe's article, he goes on to talk about the level of Pokemon. When you come into the Blueberry Academy, they will start from around level 60 and range right through to level 88, which will primarily be the Elite Four members. So the level of Pokemon is going to be a lot higher than we're normally used to. And also a lot of the Pokemon will have held items as well. So we're going to see common double strategies like Trick Room implemented, Double Intimidate, and then those held items be implemented in the strategies as well. Things like Toxic Orb, Toxic Boost, Zangoose, for instance, and Grassy Seed Whimsicott were two things that just specifically mentioned things to watch out for. But like I say, we're going to cover some double strategies today that we can implement in our teams to make it easier to beat these trainers when you go into the Indigo Disc. As Joe does outline, even if you've got higher level Pokemon, if you've maxed them out to level 100, if you're unfamiliar with double strategies, it might be a bit more difficult. It might be challenging, taxing, and this video is here to give you some ideas, hopefully some inspiration to take away into your teams ready for the Indigo Disc to help you have an easier time when you play these DLCs. So just before we get into everything today, I will mention all the Pokemon that we feature in today's video will be featured down in the description below, going over the item choices, EVs, natures and abilities so you can check out all the details after the video. The first combination of Pokemon that we're going to cover that are going to be very effective in a doubles battle scenario are going to be Ndidi and Armor Rouge. You're going to be utilizing Ndidi's Psychic Surge hidden ability and this is going to be paired up really nicely with Armor Rouge. The basic premise behind this strategy is going to be utilizing Ndidi's Psychic Surge hidden ability. This summons the Psychic Terrain to the field for five turns. It will block any priority attacks onto your side of the field. And with the move Follow Me, you can set up your Trick Room with your Armor Rouge pretty seamlessly. Then after the Trick Room is set up, you can take full advantage of the Psychic Terrain and utilize the Expanding Force attack, which boosts its damage under a Psychic Terrain and makes it into a double targeting attack. You would pair this up with a Helping Hand from Ndidi to further increase the damage and pretty much you're going to be in a great position to cut through a lot of opposing threats. The Armor Rouge build is going to be a Life Orb held item. Terra typing is going to be Grass with a moveset of Trick Room, Wide Guard, Armor Cannon and Expanding Force with the ability Flash Fire and the EV spread of 252 EVs in HP and Special Attack with the rest put in Defense and a Quiet Nature. The one caveat with Armor Rouge is if you can, try and get one with as low a speed IV as possible not reliant on this strategy working, but definitely helps you in those trick room situations. Indeedy build is going to be a fairy terror type. It is going to hold the psychic seed, so that will activate as soon as Indeedy hits the field and the psychic terrain is in effect. The moveset is going to be trick room, follow me, helping hand and dazzling gleam. It will have its hidden ability psychic surge to summon the psychic terrain to the field and its EV spread is going to be 252 in HP. 180 EVs in defense and 76 in special defense with a relaxed nature. Again, a bit like the Armor Rouge, you want to make sure if you can to try and get as low a speed IV as possible, helping the Armor Rouge and the Ndidi move first in a trick room when that is set up. Next combination is going to be based around Torkoal and Hisuian Lilligant. The basic premise of this is going to be taking advantage of Torkoal's Drought ability, which summons the Sun to the field for five turns. This in turn will activate the Chlorophyll ability 
on the Hisuian Lilligant, boosting its speed by two times, making it the fastest thing on the field. And utilizing the move after you will initiate the Torkoal to move straight after the Hisuian Lilligant, meaning that you're going to be able to put yourself in situations where you can terrestrialize and fire off full power eruptions before your opponent is able to move. A devastating strategy, as well as this, you've got the Hisuian Lilligant that has access to sleep powder and on core to disrupt opposing pokemon but as long as your sun is on the field the chlorophyll will stay in effect and with the focus sash attached to the lilligan you're going to be in a prime position to really take advantage of the tokol's big special attack and boosted by the sun tokol build is going to be a fire terror type it is going to hold the charcoal item or the flame plate whichever you have access to the move set is going to be protect earth power heat wave and eruption and the EV spread is going to be 252 in HP and 252 in special attack with a quiet nature. Again, because this is a Pokemon that's very slow naturally, a bit like the Armor Rouge and the Ndidi, if you can get that speed IV to zero or as low as possible, it will help it in these situations. And of course, because you are using it with After You, that ignores the speed stat entirely and you move directly after the partnering Pokemon is used that move. The Hisuian Lilligan build is going to be a ghost terror type that gives you the advantage if you are in front of a fake out user. You can terrestrialize, avoid the fake out, and still perform the after you to get your Torkoal in a position to fire off some big damage before your opponent is able to move. The Focus Sash gives you a bit of a buffer so you can take at least one big hit because Lilligant is a little bit squishy, not going to be the most defensive Pokemon. So with that, it does allow you to stay on the field for a little bit longer. The moveset is going to be Encore, Sleep Powder, After You and Solar Blade. And the ability is Chlorophyll with an EV spread of 252 in attack. 252 in speed and the rest put in defense with a jolly nature sticking on the theme of trick room our next combination is going to be based all around this it is going to involve Cresselia and Ursaluna so Cresselia is going to be the Pokemon that you are going to rely on to get your trick room up while you're doing the trick room setup with Cresselia you will then be protecting with your Ursaluna to make sure it's full health when that trick room is set up you can change the item to something like a mental herb or covert clock on the Cresselia, but I do like the safety goggles. It allows you to sit in front of things like a Moongus and other sleep powder users can put you to sleep and disrupt your strategy. Once the trick room is set up and you've protected the Ursaluna that turn, the flame orb will activate, activating the guts boost after the burn on the Ursaluna, and you're going to be in a position to really fire off some big damage with this deadly fall. The Cresselia build is going to be a fairy terror type with the safety safety goggles item the moveset is going to be trick room luna blessing helping hand and psychic with the levitate ability and an ev spread of 244 hp 156 defense 12 special attack and 96 special defense with a bold nature again because you are using Cresselia in a trick room environment if you can find one with a low iv or zero iv speed stat that is going to help you in that trick room environment once it's set up Make sure you are going first when the trick room is active, although it's not necessary for this strategy to work. The Ursaluna build is going to be a normal terror type. You could go a defensive terror type on the Ursaluna and go ghost if you're worried about opposing fighting types. The held item is going to be the flame orb. This is imperative to get that big attack boost from your guts ability. We've mentioned that guts ability is going to be the preferred ability on this build with a moveset of protect, earthquake, headlong rush and facade. The EV spread is going to be 252 HP and 252 attack. The rest put in special defense. And again, a lot like the other Trick Room users that we featured, if you can get your Ursaluna with a zero speed IV, it will make it more effective in a Trick Room condition. And that is going to be a very powerful combination between the Cresselia and the Ursaluna. Next up, we've got one of my favorite combinations from Scarlet and Violet, and it will involve Annihilate and Mousehold. The basic premise of this set is going to be utilizing Mousehold's ability to use the move Beat Up, which hits for the number of Pokemon you've got in your party. So if you've got a party of six Pokemon, Beat Up will hit six times. And by using that onto the Annihilate and taking advantage of its Rage Fist, which increases by 50 base power every attack that you take, it means that your Rage Fist is going to be extremely strong, about 300 base power, 
when you fire it off. You've also got the utility of using follow me with the mouse hold as well as the friend guard ability. It's pretty much the perfect partner to annihilate to allow you to get set up, protect it and allow it to unleash a fury of damage onto the opposing side of the field. The annihilate build is going to be a ghost terror type. It is going to have the held item of leftovers to restore some health throughout the battle. You're going to have the moveset of protect, bulk up, drain punch and rage fist. With the ability Defiant, that will also take advantage of any Intimidate users that we've been told will be coming from certain trainers in the Blueberry Academy. The EV spread on the Annihilate is pretty straightforward. It is 252 in HP, 252 in attack, and the rest put in special defense with an adamant nature. The Mouse Hole is going to be a Ghost Terror Typing, a little bit like the Hisuian Lilligan we featured. It is a Terror Type that is going to be defensive. If you're in front of a fake out user, it will give you the ability to terastalize and avoid the fake out and still support the Annihilate to get an attack off. The wide lens is the held item that's going to make sure that the population bomb has a best chance possible of making contact with the opposing Pokemon. The rest of the moveset is going to be made up of protect, follow me and that beat up with the ability being friend guard. The EV spread is pretty defensive and pretty speedy, but we've got 120 EVs in HP, 44 in defense, 88 in special defense, and then 252 in speed with a jolly nature. This just allows Mousehold to take advantage of that 111 speed stat that it does have access to. And with this next to the Annihilate, it is going to be a formidable combination that you can drop into pretty much any team, utilize and take advantage of this formidable duo. Now getting away from Trick Room and onto some speedier options, this one is going to be a combination between Tornadus and Goldingo. So Tornadus with the ability Prankster is going to be able to have increased priority on all status condition moves. That includes Tailwind. So before your opponent is able to move, you're going to be able to fire a Tailwind and support your partnering Pokemon, making them the fastest thing on the field. Combining this with something like the Choice Specs item on the Goldingo, you're going to be able to fire off the double target attack, make it rain, boosted by that Choice Specs, and do some significant damage to your opponent. The Tornadus build is going to be a Steel Terra Typing. That's going to be a defensive Terra Typing if you need it. The held item is going to be the Clover Clock. Again, a little bit like the Ghost Terror Typing on the Mousehold and the Lilligan. The Clover Clock is here in this situation to prevent you from flinching from potential fake out, which is going to stop your setup. This allows you to get the Tailwind off seamlessly. The moveset is going to be that Tailwind, the Rain Dance, Taunt, and Bleak Wind Storm. With that Prankster ability, you're going to be able to take advantage of Taunt to shut down opposing Trick Room setups. You're also going to be able to shut down any setup from your opponent's side of the field. The Rain Dance gives you support with your Bleak Wind Storm, making it hit 100% accurate. And also, the Goldingo is going to be protected from any fire type attacks that can come out onto the field. The EV spread for this Tornadus is pretty defensive. It is 196 EVs in HP. 12 in defense, 36 in special attack, 12 in special defense, and then the rest, 252 put into speed with a timid nature. Just making sure that you are taking full advantage of that base 111 speed stat that Tornadus access to. The Goldingo build is going to be a steel terror type, which boosts the power of those steel type attacks, namely the make it rain that you're going to be taking advantage of most of the time with this Goldingo. Held item is going to be the choice specs item. And the moveset is going to be Steel Beam, Thunderbolt, Shadow Ball, and Make It Rain. Ability is good as gold, and its EV spread is going to be 252 in HP, 252 in Special Attack, and the rest put in Defense with a modest nature. The next combination is going to be one of my favorites to suggest another combination that you're going to be able to pick up and put into any team. It is going to involve Shen Pao and Dragonite. Formidable combination. It has had a lot of success in Scarlet and Violet in the competitive scene. Shen Pao's main focus is being able to utilize that Sword of Ruin ability, which lowers the defense stat on all Pokemon that are on the field at the time when it is. Combining this ability with the Dragonite, which has got access to that extreme speed move and the normal terror typing, you're going to be able to pick up knockouts on opposing Pokemon before they have the chance to move. So it's a really good combination. 
priority across the board with both of these Pokemon, make them a formidable foe. The Shen Pao build is going to have the Ghost Terror Typing. This is because it's a defensive Terror Typing. Again, you can avoid any fighting type attacks that come out to your side of the field, which it would otherwise have a four times weakness to. So if you're in a tricky situation, you can Terrastalize to make sure it sticks around a little bit longer. To prolong that longevity, we've got the Focus Sash item on the Chen Pao and a moveset of Protect, Sucker Punch, Sacred Sword and Icicle Crash. The EV spread is pretty straightforward because we've got that Focus Sash held item. We've got a Jolly Nature and 252 in attack, 252 in speed and the rest, the remaining six put into HP. The Dragonite build is going to have the normal Terra typing. That is going to take advantage of the extreme speed that you're going to be utilizing most of the time when it's sat beside the Chen Pao. You're going to have the held item of the Choice Band to further increase the damage output from the Dragonite once it terrestrializes with a moveset of Aerial Ace, Stomping Tantrum, Outrage and Extreme Speed. The Extreme Speeds are going to be doing ridiculous damage when you're firing them off with the Chen Pao next to you as well as that Outrage as well which already is boosted by its part dragging typing and then you've got nice coverage in the Stomping Tantrum and the Aerial Ace if you need it. Just one caveat because of the Choice Band Held item it means once you've picked a certain move you'll be locked into that for the rest of the time until you switch Dragonite out and bring it back onto the field. The EV spread for the Dragonite is going to be 252 HP with 252 in attack with an adamant nature and the rest put in special defense. The ability we've chosen here is the multi-scale ability because it means that you're taking less damage from super effective attacks as long as your HP is full. You can change this for the inner focus ability if you're more worried about intimidate users because that will deny the intimidators from being able to lower your attack as well as give you an immunity to any flinches. Another formidable combination that we've seen in the competitive scene in VG is something that I'm going to suggest for you taking into the Indigo Disc, and it is going to be between Fluttermane and Chi Yu. Now, Fluttermane Chi Yu, the basic principle of this is again taking advantage of the legendary stake Pokemon's ability. This time it is going to be Beads of Ruin because this ability lowers the special defense stat on all Pokemon on the field at that time. And between Chi Yu and Fluttermane, you are going to be able to take advantage of the sky high special attacking stat of these two Pokemon in combination. The Fluttermane build is going to have the booster energy, it is going to have the Terra type Fairy and it will have the moveset of Protect, Icy Wind, Shadow Ball and Moonblast with the Protosynthesis ability and EV spread to allow it to sit on the field for a lot longer than you would normally expect it to with 188 in HP. 204 in defense, 36 in special attack, 12 in special defense and then 68 in speed with a timid nature. The Chi Yu build is going to be a ghost terror typing. Again, it is going to be a more defensive terror typing. You can choose to go with a dark or a fire if you want to boost either one of those attacking options that it's already got the same type attack bonus on. The held item is going to be the choice specs item and the moveset is going to be overheat, snarl, Heat Wave and Dark Pulse. With that Beads of Ruin ability and an EV spread of 136 in HP, 252 in defense, and 120 in special attack with a modest nature. This just gives you a bit more staying power with the Chi Yu when you're on the field with it, so you can get more of those big, boosted, powerful attacks off onto your opponent and make easy work of them. Next up, we've got a classic Scarlet and Violet combination that, again, you can drop into pretty much any team if you're taking into the Indigo Disc. It is going to be a very good doubles combination and make it very difficult for your opponent to be able to deal with. It is going to be Dondozo and Tatsuguri. The basic premise behind this is just get that Tatsuguri out onto the field, which will then activate the commander ability, where you'll see the Dondozo swallow the little fish and then get an Omni boost across the board with plus two across all of its stats, making Dondozo a very difficult Pokemon to deal with. The one drawback with this strategy is where you'd normally have two Pokemon out at one time, you will only have one out. But with those boosts that you've got access to with the Dondozo, it's going to be extremely powerful. The Dondoza build is going to have a Steel Terror type with the Leftovers held item. Its moveset is going to be Protect, Earthquake, Order Up and Wave Crash. The one thing to make sure with the Tatsuguri, it is the Curly form. So the Curly Tatsuguri form is the one.
one that you're going to want to have with this Dondozo because every time you use Order Up after you've swallowed the Tatsuguri, it's going to give you an additional attack boost on top of those boosts that you've already got on the Dondozo. Wave Crash is going to be your main attacking option and then Earthquake gives you damage across both Pokemon on the opposite side of the field. Very strong combination and make sure it's got that unaware ability so you ignore any stat boosts from your opponent's side of the field. The EV spread is going to be 252 in that speed stat with 228 in its attack stat and 28 in HP with an adamant nature. The Tatsuguri, like we've already mentioned, is that curly form. Its held item is going to be the Choice Scarf and its terror typing is going to be Water. The moveset is going to be Icy Wind, Dragon Pulse, Draco Meteor and Muddy Water. With that command air ability, it is very important for this combination and an EV spread of 252 in speed, 252 in special attack with a timid nature. The next combination we're going to cover is going to be Roaring Moon and Weezing. So Cantonian Weezing, the basic premise of this is taking advantage of the Cantonian Weezing's neutralizing gas ability, which shuts off all opposing Pokemon's abilities as long as it's out on the field. The abilities that it doesn't affect are those Protosynthesis and Quark Drive abilities, as well as the Embody Aspect ability on the various Ogre Ponds that you're going to see. Although I'm not assuming any of the opponents in the Blue Ray Academy are going to have either any legendary Pokemon or the Ogre Ponds in their party, so you should be pretty safe shutting off everything else going forward. This is going to mean if they do lead with Intimidate users, it's not going to be active. If they do lead with something like Grassy Terrain or Psychic Terrain, then that is not going to be active either but your protosynthesis is going to be activated with your booster energy because that is not affected by the neutralizing gas. It's a very strong ability and it can really stop your opponent's strategies in their tracks when and as long as you've got the wheezing on the field. The basic premise is to keep wheezing on the field for as long as possible and support it with your Roaring Moon. Roaring Moon having access to Tailwind can put you in a really strong dominant position where you're able to get that speed control early on in the match. Utilize tools that the Weezing's got, like that Taunt, like that Will-O-Wisp. Taunt can be good at shutting down Trick Room and opposing setup, as well as the Will-O-Wisp for reducing the attack stats on those opposing threats. The Roaring Moon build is going to be a flying Terra type. It is going to have the held item of the booster energy. That's going to give you an attack boost as soon as you come onto the field with a moveset of Protect, Tailwind, Knockoff, and Acrobatics. The Protosynthesis ability there and an EV spread of 252 in attack, 252 in speed with an adamant nature. Basically, you want to get that Tailwind up turn one, Terrastalize, and take advantage of that acrobatics and the big power that you can do with knockoff. The Weezing build is going to have a defensive terror typing. It is going to be a ghost terror typing. It is going to have the held item of the citrus berry and a moveset of protect will o wisp taunt and then gunk shot which is going to be your main damaging option neutralizing gas is its ability and an ev spread of 252 in hp 236 in its speed stat with four in attack and defense and then eight put in special defense with a jolly nature now although we've covered some combinations that you can drop into teams or build teams around some other Pokemon that are going to be very useful in doubles battles are going to be Intimidate users. There are two that I'm going to outline in today's video. I think the best ones that we've got access to in the games at the moment. And they are going to be Hisuian Arcanine being the first one. The build that we've got for this Hisuian Arcanine is going to be an offensive Intimidate user that you can bring in. But it's going to have a lot of offensive pressure to put on to the opposing side of the field. We're going to have that Choice Band, Fairy Terror Typing. And it will have the moveset of Extreme Speed, Terror Blast, Flare Blitz, and Rock Slide. Just be aware when you do choose a move initially with the Hisuian Arcanine because of the Choice Band, you'll be locked into that until you switch out and bring it back onto the field again. But that's kind of fine because you want to be doing that with Intimidate, cycling that as much as possible onto those physical threats when you're in battle anyway. The EV spread for this Arcanine is going to be very straightforward, 252 in attack, 252 in speed with an adamant nature. The other Intimidator that we're going to feature in today's video is going to be Landorus Therian Form, probably one of the most formidable Intimidators that we've had in the doubles format. Landorus is going to have the Flying Terror type, it is going to have the held item of the Choice Scarf and it will have a moveset of U-Turn, Terror Blast, Rock Slide and Stomping Tantrum with the ability Intimidate with the EV spread of 252 in attack, 
252 EVs in speed and a adamant nature. With the choice golf held item, it is going to give you a 1.5 times boost to your speed set, meaning that you're going to be able to outspeed most Pokemon when you initially come out onto the field without the reliance on any speed control like Tailwind or Icy Wind, anything like that. Then you're going to have the ability straight off the bat if you want to go for that terrestrialization and utilize those Terra Blasts, which are going to pick up any flying weak Pokemon that will be in front of you. You've also got the coverage with the Rock Slide, which is really nice with the Choice Scarf. You can fish for flinches and then the Stomping Tantrum, which is going to be your ground stab attack. If you're in a position with Landorus at the start of the battle where it's not preferable, you've got some big threats in front of you. Even though you are threatened, you've got the Choice Scarf, you're going to be faster than the opposing Pokemon on the opposite side of the field. You've got the option to use that U-turn to pivot out and then utilize that Intimidate later on in the battle if you would like to once you've got rid of those initial threats that are out on the field. Other Pokemon that are going to be useful in battles are going to be Pokemon that have the ability to soak up a lot of damage come in and utilize moves like Faker, which allows you to reposition your Pokemon, take things off the field that are a bit more threatened, or allow you to get set up with some of those setup options that we've seen throughout this video. Rillaboom is a great option for this. It's got access to the fake out, it's got access to priority moves, and it's got access to terrain, which can disrupt some opposing Pokemon's setup. The Rillaboom build is gonna be holding the Assault Vest. We're gonna have a defensive terror type in that fire typing. We've got the moveset of U-Turn, Woodhammer, Grassy Glide, and Fake Out. Hidden ability is going to be Grassy Surge and an EV spread of 252 in HP, 76 in attack, 52 in defense, 124 in special defense, and 4 in speed with an adamant nature. The basic premise is to bring Rillaboom to support partnering Pokemon. With that fake out, you're going to flinch the target Pokemon for one turn and give you room to set up or get some big damage off that your opponent can't recover from. You've got Grassy Glide to pick things off and snipe things with. It will turn into a priority attack as long as the Grassy Terrain is set on the field, which it should be with your Grassy Surge hidden ability. Woodhammer is your big damaging attack if you need it. And then U-Turn is a really nice option, which gives you a slow pivot out. If you want to switch Rillaboom out and bring something in in place of it, you can do that pivoting out probably most of the time last after your opponents have moved, giving you a kind of a free switch into a more powerful threat for that next turn to take advantage of. Another fake out user and another good defensive tool that you can take advantage of in your doubles teams is gonna be Iron Hands. This Iron Hands build has the Grass Terra Typing, Assault Vest as its held item, and the moveset of Heavy Slam, Wild Charge, Drain Punch, and Fake Out. Again, if you want, you can change the Heavy Slam to Volt Switch. It gives you another nice slow pivot out like we've just outlined with the Rillaboom. The EV spread on this Iron Hands is going to be 4 EVs in HP, 156 EVs in attack, 4 in defense, 252 in special defense, and 92 in speed with an adamant nature. Basic premise with this Iron Hands, again, a lot like the Rillaboom, it will be there with that fake out at the start of the match to support your partnering Pokemon, either get set up or get some big damage onto the field. It's also one of those Pokemon that you can keep in the back and switch in in specific situations to soak up damage preserve those more frail Pokemon for later in the battle when you've dealt with those threats with things like your Iron Hands and whatever's partnering next to it. And another really important tool for you putting teams together is to consider the use of a redirector in your team. Redirectors are going to consist of things that have Rage Powder or Follow Me and there are specifically really good ones available for doubles battles that are going to be able to take up a lot more attacks, pull in a lot more attacks, be a lot more disruptive and the many other options that we've got available in the game. The first one that we're going to touch upon is Amoongus. Amoongus is going to be one of those staples that you see throughout any VG competitive scene, wherever it is available. The build that I'm going to suggest today for you is going to have the Dragon Terror type. It takes away a lot of those elemental weaknesses that it does already have, as well as that flying weakness making those ineffective or just neutral. Held item is going to be the Citrus Berry to give it a little bit of recovery throughout the battle with a moveset of Protect, Sport, Rage Powder and Pollen Puff. It's going to have its hidden ability Regenerator and an EV spread of 236 HP EVs, 196 in its defense 
and 76 in its special defense with a sassy nature. If you can as well, make sure that your Amoongus has a zero speed IV or very low speed IV. It will make it a very good disruptive tool if your opponent sets up a trick room. You can bring this in, put opposing threats to sleep and really make that trick room environment not pleasant for your opponent to be in. Another redirector that you've got access to is going to be Clefairy. We are suggesting Clefairy over Clefable because it is a bit better defensively with that Eviolite item that it does have access to because it's a pre-evolved Pokemon. We're going to go for a defensive Terra typing on it again with the Fire Terra typing. Moveset is going to be Protect, Flummy, Helping Hand and Moonblast with an EV spread of 252 in HP, 220 EVs in defense, and 36 in special defense with a bold nature. Make sure it has got the friend guard ability as well. It's another selling point for making this a redirector sitting next to your partnering Pokemon, boosting their defenses even further for the period of time that the Clefairy is sitting on the field next to it. The final redirector that I'm going to suggest in today's video is going to be Ogopon with the Wellspring Mask. So the grass and the water type Ogopon. It will have the Terra Typing Water because that will be what it's locked into. It will have the move set of Spiky Shield that is like Protect, but if your opponent hits into you with a contact move, it will damage them in the process while protecting you from any damage. You've got Follow Me as that redirecting move and then the damage output that this redirector offers as well, which is Woodhammer, huge attacking option and Ivy Cudgel, which is going to be a water type attack because you're holding that Wellspring Mask. The ability is going to be water absorbed, so it's a really good option to have next to a water weak Pokemon where you can redirect and pull in all of those water type attacks to your Orgapon and restore your health while doing it. As well as that, you're going to be able to redirect all of those things like spores or sleep powders that could potentially come out and be a bit of a threat to your partnering Pokemon. And you're not going to be affected by them because of your part grass typing. With the EV spread on this Ogopon of 188 EVs in HP, 76 in attack, 20 in defense, 4 in special defense and 220 in its speed stat with an adamant nature. A very good utility Pokemon where you can utilize that redirection, but be an offensive threat at the same time. Obviously, when you do terrestrialize, if you do choose to terrestrialize with the Ogapon, you do get access to the Embody Aspect ability upon terrestrializing and get a further special defense boost, which is going to make it even more difficult for your opponent to break through, especially if you are pulling in those special attacking moves to protect a partner in Pokemon while it launches big attacks into that side of the field. So they are all of the Pokemon that we're going to feature in today's video. A lot of combinations. I hope that these have been useful for you in pairing for the Indigo Disc. If you've got your team already set out, if you're already established with doubles, I'd love to hear what your teams and your ideas are going to be going into the Indigo Disc. At the end of the day, don't worry about it too much. I don't expect these are going to be impossible battles. These are just some suggestions to help you make these games these battles this format that you're going into that you might not be so familiar with a lot easier to kind of prepare for if you've got any questions about anything that we covered in today's video do drop them in the comment section below i will make sure to try and get back to each and every one of you thank you for tuning in we're very excited we're on the rundown now to the indigo disc it's not long till it drops hope you are as excited as i am i cannot wait for these games to come out and uh, we'll leave it there thanks for tuning in again friends take care of yourselves until next time take care and bye bye